Hello and welcome to Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling. We host JP John Paz with me today, former WWF World Tag Team Champion. He's a WWF Hall of Famer. He's an NWA Tag Team Champion. He's a TV Champion. I mean, he's done it all in the business. An absolute legend. He is Mr. NWA Telly Blanchard. Hall of Fame, too. Yes, NWA Hall of Fame. Yes, he is Mr. Telly Blanchard. Welcome back to the Two Man Power Trip. How are you doing? <laughs> I am doing great. Merry Christmas to everybody three days ago. And hope everybody is getting ready for a very happy new year. Yes, definitely. And of course, this is the eighth anniversary of the show. Somehow I've been doing this for eight years now. You've wow. been uh, one of the best guests. So I had to bring you back. One of my favorites. So I had to bring you back for the eighth uh, anniversary. Time flies. That is crazy that it's been eight years. Congratulations on eight years. Thank you. You probably won't remember this, or maybe you will. About five years ago, you actually you took me out to Top Golf, and we played some Top Golf with uh, your son-in-law. It was fun. Oh wow! In Charlotte. Yes. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, it was good stuff. You're a pretty good golfer. I know you mentioned you were golfing before. You're a pretty damn good golfer. <laughs> well, I can I can be good some days, and I can be pretty stinky some days. I got you. So what's going on in your world, though? What have you you been up to? Ah, just working. Just working. We've got uh, events coming up at the Bear County Jail. We've got events. uh, uh, I just work at the church, at Cornerstone Church, and um, the director of jail and prison ministry. And then I'm also the pastor for the what we call prime singles, which is 50 to 65-year-olds. And, uh, that I was asked to do that last year. So I've been doing it for one year and, uh, all things are growing. All things are getting bigger and things that are growing and getting bigger are usually, uh, being successful. Absolutely. So what about wrestling? like your show eight years? Yeah. Yeah. When you started, how many people viewed your first podcast? To how many people are watching your podcast now? Yeah, it's true. Probably times a thousand when it <laughs> when it first started, or times five thousand or whatever since for when it first started. Yeah, absolutely, very true. So that's exciting. Yes, definitely. So, what have you been up to wrestling wise? Anything going on in in the wrestling world? Well, uh, I'm no longer with AEW or Ring of Honor or any subsidiaries thereof. That sounded pretty legal, didn't it? Yeah, very. (laughs) And uh, so I would imagine that my wrestling career is probably over other than doing autograph shows and uh, things like we did in Nashville. Although I don't know how many retirement matches, last matches Flair can have, so... What'd you think about that? What'd you think about Flair's last match? I didn't see it and wasn't there. Ah, damn. I would have thought you would have been uh, there for, I know you were there that weekend, but I would have was surprised you weren't uh, at the show itself. Well, the show was on Sunday Mm -hmm. and I have to be at my day job. Right. Okay. Makes sense. The one that pays all my bills. Yes. Gotcha. I got you. So what did you think about just him doing it? I mean, 73 years old, obviously, you know, he's way past his prime. But what do you think about Flair actually wrestling? Um, We would, I would probably not comment on that. Okay. Because I probably don't have a lot of positive to say. And I personally would prefer my last match, unfortunately, AEW talked me into one. Um, but before that, most most of my matches, I think I only wrestled like maybe six or seven times after my full-time career. And um, people's memories are of me or me and Arn or me and the horseman 
from back in those days when I could actually do it. And I can't do it anymore. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I was asked to do a, a, a last match with Ricky Steamboat. And I, I'm not going to embarrass myself and go out there and not be able to do what I used to do. Just watch the videos. Hmm. Plus, you don't want to get hurt either, right? I mean, you don't want to get oh, hurt no. out there. I hurt bad enough now. <laughs> already doing it. But you're in pretty good shape, though. Well, I, I work out hard uh, five, six days a week. and uh, But mostly that is just to be able to get up out of bed. And uh, I watched... I watched a couple of matches with uh, maybe four or five months ago. I watched a match with Arn and I against uh, the Rockers, Madison Square Gardens. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. You guys were the best. And, and that, I, but I mean, I was my mouth dropped open that I actually got up and down that many times in one match. <laughs> and it was like that every night. You and Arn were bumping machines. Yeah. And selling machines. Yeah. And, and so no wonder at 68 years old, my friggin' hips hurt and my knees hurt and my back hurts and my shoulder hurts. And I am fortunate to be able to shoot in the eighties on the golf course. Pretty good. Very good, actually. So you mentioned not being with AEW Ring of Honor. Is that just the contract is up? You you know you you're just done. Like you're the contract's over and you moved on. Um. No, it was a little more complex than that. But my contract is up and I'm gone. Do you think that, like when you said they kind of asked you to do the last match, talked you into it, do you think that it turned out well? Because I thought that was a pretty good match. It was obviously a six-man tag, but I thought that was a pretty good match. With, uh... Who's yeah, it? Jungle but, Boy, uh, yeah. Marco Stunt, yeah. yeah. Jungle Boy, and Marco took the absolute greatest slingshot suplex of anybody alive. Anytime. Yeah. It was awesome, and it it made me look better than I am, and everything else was good, and we got through it, and I didn't need to do that anymore. Pretty cool, though. FTR, who obviously loves you guys, got to team with you. I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> FTR is FTR, and they are doing well. And making lots of money, and God bless them. They obviously pattern a lot of stuff off of you guys. Uh, you know, you just you could just tell they pattern, which is great. A little bit of an homage to Arn and yourself. Well, uh, it is. I would like to say that that you you really can't duplicate what Arn and I did. Um just by the nature of what the business is nowadays. And I am very much non... I never went to the ring and knew what I was going to do. And uh, that's why I could respond to the audience that's why arn could respond to the audience and we did it in such a manner that we flowed and um i probably am too archived for what the business is today do you think that's a, a thing that, that like today's wrestler, this generation is kind of missing? Because it seems like a lost <clears throat> art being able to just call on the fly and not know what you're doing ahead of time. It's very much of a lost art. And, um, but, you know, that's just, it's only my opinion. 
I mean, the, the thing about the wrestling business is it survived many, many years, many, many people, uh, people that worked like we did, people that didn't work like we did, um, big stars, medium stars, bigger stars, and professional wrestling will survive and will continue to go on. And that's the exciting thing of it. Um, selfishness, I just want autograph shows to keep going and people to keep bringing me to the, <laughs> to the autograph shows. Right. Right. And bring the horsemen back together for another ride or two. Yeah. <laughs> but to me, when you were with FTR, just kind of a perfect compliment because they love the old school. Not not necessarily a lot of other guys do. I mean, they go kind of a completely different direction. But FTR seems to love like the old school guys. Yeah. Midnight Express, yourself, have, even like the Heavenly Bodies. They seem to like you know the older the old school tag teams. Not necessarily some of um, I don't know some of the flippity floppity stuff you see a lot of the other guys do. Right. Not that it's necessarily necessarily a bad thing. It's just. Kind of wrestling I like, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, no, it's just more it's old just, school, it's, yeah. It is what it is. And they are, FTR is probably the best uh, tag team in wrestling today. Um, and, you know, Arn and I were the best tag team in wrestling back then. And you can't put the two against each other. When I see not not them, but like other teams and other wrestlers, I always think like when there's a screw up in the match back in the day, you could kind of can't tell because you guys can go in different directions. Nowadays, it's almost like they have to rewind and then try to figure out, you know, where they're going from from there. It's like, I don't know. You guys were so much easier adaptable because you're paying attention to the crowd. You're, it, you don't know where you're going necessarily. So if there's a screw up or something, it doesn't matter. You just keep going. Well, I. I don't watch very much of it nowadays. Um, I haven't watched very much of it for 30 years. Um, and so it is, uh, when I was with AEW, I didn't watch a lot of it. I, I paid attention to what we were doing, but I didn't pay attention to a lot of what other stuff was. And so, uh, it's very difficult for me to uh, step into the 2022 version versus the 1988 version, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you enjoy your time in AEW? Like, did you enjoy being back in the business? Because you said, like, you're kind of away from business, not really watching. Did you enjoy your time there? Uh, yes, I did. Would you ever return to them or any sort of wrestling organization? Or are you kind of, like you said, eh, I'm kind of done. I am probably done. Um, I doubt that AEW would have me come back. I doubt that uh, WWE would have me come back. And where else would you go except those two places? What do you think, like, as far as when like you were there, was there a lot of guys asking you for advice and stuff or not really? Not at all. Oh, really? I'm surprised. You would, I know you would think that they would be asking like ours guys like you and Arn. Yeah. But okay. you got to understand those guys weren't born when me, when Arn and I were, they, they, they really didn't know who Arn and I were. Wow. Kind of surprising. You know, just if you're going to be a historian, you got to, you know, maybe go back and watch the tape. <laughs> it's, out, it's out there. YouTube, the network, you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know. Huh. Were you kind of expecting that or just, it, it is what it is. You didn't really expect one thing or another out of that. I, it just is what it is. See, they got to go back and they got to watch, you know, the, the horsemen, they got to watch you and Magnum. You know what I mean? You gotta, they got to study the business, learn, you know, maybe not steal, but you know, take a thing from here and there. What's old is new again. <laughs> Imagine getting the, the heat that you would get nowadays. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, you would think a guy would want to aspire to, to kind of be like Tully Blanchard getting all the heat back in the day. Well, 
they need to have you talk to them then maybe. <laughs> hey, okay, call me up. I'll I'll talk to him. I'll convince him. <laughs> With the horsemen, and obviously, you know, talking about heat and stuff. <laughs> and I, was, I was just watching the Ric Flair documentary, which is on uh, Peacock, and you know, talking about the original horsemen and and how really when it came to national prominence and and you guys were you know, ki- killing things. Obviously, WWF was on another level. You guys are over here at the NWA dominating another level. What was it like being a part of, of the Four Horsemen? Just because it's one of the things where it's hard to kind of think and even fathom, like this faction, this group, these four guys coming together, dominating the wrestling scene like we've never seen before. Well, I mean, we had never seen before, and – so you really didn't understand what was happening as it was happening. You know, we just went out each night and tried to entertain the people the best we could. Uh, Rick did on his part. Arn and I did on our part. Uh, Barry did on his part. And when Arn and Ole were the tag team, uh, they did on their part. And, and I was the other single and we did it and we just tried to entertain the people the best we could as we did before the horseman or after the horseman. Was that your favorite incarnation of the group? Um, the best carnation was the group that got into the hall of fame with Barry. Yes. When, but you ha- when you have the most talent uh, in your group, you can do more things. And Barry is ex- was uh, hands down as good as anybody that's ever put on boots in this business. Flair was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, world champion. And Arn and I were whatever wrestling fans from that era would talk about me and Arn, but we were all together and it was the best group and it was the right group to take to uh, the hall of fame. It's probably, well, it's definitely the greatest like four workers as far as wrestlers put put together for sure. That's your favorite too, or or not necessarily favorite, just the best. Oh no, it was the best and my favorite, my favorite. I mean, it was uh, great to be part of the group period. And, and we just, when, when you wrestle every night someplace, um, you just, you don't have time to think about what you're doing. You just jump on an airplane, go somewhere else and hit replay. How is Barry doing? Have you checked in? I know he had a big health scare recently. Yes, he, he was, um. He's doing much better. I have texted with him back and forth uh, a couple of weeks ago until he was out of the hospital. And uh, he's, he's doing, doing much, much better. And uh, hope to see him in the near future. One of the best. Definitely one of the best. And you think about it, you take Ole and, and you move Luger out of the horseman, you put him in, and the group gets better. It's pretty amazing just to oh. think about Barry. Absolutely. And can't forget your buddy JJ either. Important, integral part of the group. Can't forget oh, JJ. Oh, absolutely. James J. Dillon. Yes, your boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little Tully Blanchard Enterprises, little JJ Dillon. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So when you just look back at just at your career in general, what, what would you say is like the legacy of Tully Blanchard when you look back? Um, don't really know. I mean, you, it, it's difficult to take away the horseman aspect, but there were huge uh, successes before that. Uh, when we, when I went to work for Crockett the second time in 1984 and their business wasn't, uh, doing very well. And, uh, Wahoo and I wrestled Flair and Mulligan in a bull rope strap match that turned the company 
uh, around and turned the, the business around. And uh, it was uh, pretty remarkable. And then a couple of years later, you've got the, the horseman thing that just got put together and uh, exploded. And the horseman, you and Baby Doll, your feud with Magna TA, your feud with Dusty, so many memorable moments uh, in your career. Then you go to the WWF as the Brain Busters, you win the tag titles. Uh, like you mentioned, great matches with the Rockers. Just a you know, great, great career you had. And of course, like I said before, your heat magnet. Uh, you were one of the, the best heels in the business. Know that about it. I think people liked Flair. They definitely didn't like you. You know what I mean? Like there was a <laughs> there was some hatred there from those fans. They weren't supposed to like me. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Flair was such a likable guy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You're almost like either jealous of him or like, oh man, I, you know, you kind of want to be this guy. You know what I mean? He was, he was one of those guys. You were like, oh man, I hope Magnum gets this guy. I hope Dusty gets this guy. Yeah, but it worked. It worked. That's where you're supposed to be. It worked. Absolutely. So, as far as anything like appearances, do you want to? Uh, put any social media out there where people can reach out I to you? I actually or? am not signed up for any. Uh, I know that that uh, there's been some negotiations about um, uh, the WrestleMania weekend in Los Angeles about going out there with my daughter, Tessa. Um, but anything other than that is kind of how the next year starts and we'll see what what people can do i hope that that uh, i get out there a few weekends but uh it is that's the guys that do the autograph shows like your contemporaries yes yes so they would reach out to you through instagram or what do you no, they just they can actually contact you. Okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'll I'll yeah, I'll handle that. Yeah, no problem. Is uh, Tessa back in the business or is she staying away from the business? Because it looks like you said that she's doing some signings. Is she coming back in? I think she was going to school, right? She is going to school. And um I hope that she stays there and gets her degree. But it is uh this business is enticing and uh but it is extremely important to get your education yep and be able to fall back on that because you can't wrestle until you're except for flair till you're 70. <laughs> right very true Hey, she was one of the best uh, female wrestlers in, in the business when she was uh, rock and rolling. So hopefully, oh, yeah. hopefully she gets back into it. I'm hoping. Well, she's she can do it on the weekends and still go to school. So we'll see what the future has for her. Yes, and we'll hopefully see you in and around the business somewhere, conventions or not. So hopefully we'll see you. But Tully, thank you so much uh, for all the time. I really appreciate it. And thank you for celebrating. And thank you, sir, for eight years of faithfulness of doing this podcast every week. And hopefully we'll both be around. And at 16 years, we'll have the same interview again. All right. Perfect. Sounds good to me. Thank you so much. Bless you, John. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.